Hey guys, so in today's video, I will be showing you how to create this particular artwork. I call it Rain in the Night. So I hope you enjoy this video and without further ado, let's get into it. To start, you need a vector image of your own or you can get it from freepick.com to follow this tutorial. I will put a link in the description in this video. Download the zip file and you can save it in your preferred cloud drive. I am using Dropbox in this example. Once you're in the Cloud Drive app, find the zip file and then open the file using another app called WinZip. It is free to download. You can see all the files contained within the zip file. Find the one with the EPS extension. Save the file into the file's iOS app. Open Affinity Designer and tap on Import from Cloud. Look for the file name that you've just saved in the Files app. Tap to open it. Now that we have the artwork opened, we need to select just the objects that we need. To do this, it is necessary to ungroup the layers in this artwork. Once you're done ungrouping, select just the couple with the umbrella. Now that you've selected it, tap on Copy. Now let's start a new document. Doesn't really matter what size it is, just make sure that it is big enough. Once you're in the new document, tap on paste. Now let's clean up the image by deleting all other elements that we don't need. Select all the objects on screen now and group them. Create a new layer and drag the grouped object into the layer. Let's make a new layer so that we can place the background on it. Drag this new layer to the bottom. Then let's make a rectangle and cover the whole document size. Change the color of the rectangle to a very dark one. You can change the name of this layer to BG if you wish. I will lock this layer now to prevent any accidental movement. Let's create another layer so that we can place a light source on it. This light source is simply a circle with a gradient color applied. Apply an elliptical gradient fill to the circle. Tap on the point in the middle and change the color. Let's open the color panel. I prefer to set these color values as you see here. You can experiment using your preferred color if you wish. Now let's change the color values of the edge of the circle gradient. Tap on the other point of the gradient handle. These are the color values that I use. You can use any color you like, but most importantly, you must set the opacity to zero. Let's select the couple image and position it lower on the document. Let's resize it to make it bigger as well. I will also adjust the position of the lighting so that it is directly behind the couple. I will also resize it bigger. Now let's select the couple and then tap on the FX panel. Turn on inner glow and then tap on the panel itself to open the settings. I will now change the color to these values. It needs to be a dark color. We need to change the blend mode as well as the radius and intensity. The idea is to create a silhouette, but not completely. We need the edges to be lighted up. Next, let's turn on the outer shadow effects. I prefer using this rather than using outer glow to achieve the effect. Let's change the color values. Make it a light color. You can have your own color to experiment. Next, set the radius value. We need to have a glow on the couple image. Not too much of a glow though. Again, you can experiment to see what works best. Now, let's tap on the layer options for the couple image. We shall change the blend mode. For this artwork, I find that multiply blend mode works best. 
experiment and see for yourself the other blend modes. Now don't forget to label the layer, I'm calling it Couple. Let's create a new vector layer and let's name it Rain. We will now draw Rain using the Pen tool. Make sure to change the mode to Line so that we can easily draw a line. Tap on the Strokes Fill icon, the one that looks like a donut, and then we can change the color to white. Now let's draw a vertical line. Just tap and drag. You can place another finger to constrain it. Tap on the Strokes Panel button and then select the Dashed Style. Let's modify the options here. Set the width to 1 and then change the phase, dash and gap values. We need to achieve a dashed line effect. Tap on the move tool and move the line over to the left side. Let's draw a few more lines next to the first line. All these lines look quite similar, so let's change them by opening the strokes panel and change the values of the phase, dash, and gap. Let's select all these lines and group them. Next, duplicate the group of lines and place them to the right side. I accidentally adjusted the background light source. I'm going to lock this layer to prevent this in the future. I'm adjusting the position of the first group of lines and I'm also dragging both layers of lines below the couple image. Now let's change the blend mode of the rain layer to color dodge. I will also lower down the layer opacity level to about half. Next, tap on the FX button, turn on and select the Gaussian Blur option. Set the radius value to 5. Now let's duplicate the rain layer and move the layer above the couple image. Adjust the position of the new rain layer so that it doesn't overlap with the first one. I will also reposition and resize the new rain group by making it taller. Now select the Gaussian Blur option and change the radius value to about 2.9. Let's change the new rain layer opacity to make it more translucent. Let's lock this layer the other rain layer and also the couple image layer as well after we are done. Now let's make a new vector layer and name it as raindrops. I'm using the pen tool and setting the mode to line. Remember to change the color of the stroke to white. Let's draw a short line straight down, touching the umbrella. Adjust the dash pattern as you wish. Draw a few more lines like these to represent the raindrops splattering. You can adjust the stroke patterns for each of these lines. Tap on the node on one end of the line and then tap on Smooth. Next, tap and drag the handle to curve the line. Next, I will select the raindrops layer and apply a gradient to the stroke field. Adjust the position of the gradient handle so that the center point is in the middle. Tap on the outer edge gradient handle point and change the opacity much lower. I'm changing the opacity of the center point of the gradient handle lower as well. Now let's duplicate this layer. P 
place the duplicated raindrops layer to another location on the umbrella. Duplicate this layer and place this at another location on the umbrella. Tap on the transform button and then tap on the flip horizontal button. Let's adjust the gradient stroke values so that it will be more translucent. Create a new vector layer. Lock all the raindrops layer. Let's create a six-sided polygon now. Rotate this polygon so that the flat side will lay horizontally. Next, make sure the polygon tool is still selected, then tap on to curve in the settings below. Tap on the curve tool and then tap and drag to select all the nodes. And then drag one node inwards to create curved corners for all the nodes. Let's change the color of this polygon to a yellow color. Set the opacity to a low level. Make sure you turn off the strokes. We don't want the strokes to appear here. Now let's duplicate this polygon and then move it aside. Don't align it to the center of the first polygon. It has to be off center by a bit. Let's change its opacity to a lower value. You can also change it to have a reddish hue or a light blue color. You can experiment and see what you prefer. Now let's group these two and then duplicate them. Place them in another location. Repeat this process several times. You can change the colors as you like. Now let's apply a Gaussian Blur to this layer. Tap on the FX button and then select Gaussian Blur. Raise the radius value to 7. You can experiment with this to suit your style. I'm going to resize and reposition this layer. You don't have to do this step. It is really up to you. And the final important step to achieve the bokeh look is to duplicate the layer and then reposition it slightly. Drag both of these two layers and place them below the couple image layer. You also need to change the opacity of the duplicate layer to a much lower value. Make it more transparent. And that's it. I hope you like this video, if you do, give it a thumbs up on this video and also don't forget to subscribe to get more of this kind of videos on my channel. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.